This is Brian Wormers recording a lecture from Medical Surgical Nursing on the topic of assessment of the hematological system. Here are your learning objectives that pair up with your PowerPoints. So anatomy and physiology. So major components of this is going to be bone marrow, which will lead into your blood components, such as plasma, which is albumin, globulins, and fibrinogens, and what we talk about more commonly, which are the cells, the RBCs, the WBCs, and the platelets. You've also got accessory organs such as the spleen, which will help take out damaged and destroyed cells, and your liver, which can also work with your clotting time. So hemostasis and blood clotting, so we, we have to worry about platelet aggregation. So that plasminogen activates, and then um, you can kind of see this chain right here as it progresses on. It causes that fibrin clot, but then also we've got to also think about when we're going to stop that fibrin clot. Otherwise, we'd just be one big gelatinous mess. So we do have to have some anti-clotting forces to break that up when we're done with it and to prevent our body from clotting all over the place. Some changes associated with aging include decreased blood volume, fewer, fewer blood cells, a lower level of plasma proteins, and some lymphocytes that are less sensitive to antigens, which will decrease your immune function. Assessment methods, of course, we want to get a good history. You know, we want to see their nutritional status. We want to look at their family history, genetic risk. What kind of um, side effects are they currently having? What meds are they on? What other diagnoses do they have? What disease processes do they have? And then we can kind of do our head to toe. So looking at the skin, any rashes, any bruising, any petechiae. Um, head and neck, any swollen lymph nodes or any of those things. Respiratory, how are they breathing? Um, any crackles, wheezes, cardiovascular-wise, do they have good pulses? Kidney and urine, are they making good urine output or are they having decreased volume issues? Musculoskeletal, what's the size of those muscles? Is it equal bilateral? How is their strength bilaterally? Abdominal, we can uh, palpate the abdomen. We can see if there's any masses or any other problems there. You can also look for any bruising on the abdomen. And then central nervous system, we can see how they're they're functioning. Some diagnostics, some of the lab tests we can do would be a, a peripheral blood smear to look at the cells and the types of the cells that we got. We can do a CBC to look at um, your red blood cells, your white blood cells, your platelets. We can do a reticulocyte count, which is looking at uh, how fast these cells are getting kicked out of the bone marrow. We can look at the hemoglobin and electrophoresis to look at the, the hemoglobin size and shape and see what, what what kind of quality they have. We can do a Coombs test, either a direct or an indirect, and Coombs test is looking for compatibility of blood products. We can do iron tests if they're um, anemic. We can do clotting factors such as PT, PTT, INR, and an anti-factor XA. And we could also do platelet aggregation to look for their clotting time and how they're going to stop bleeding. We can also do um, radioisotopic imaging. Um, and so we can also do nuclear med scans too. So we'll put a nuclear tracer in some of the RBCs and see where they go, or WBCs and see where they go. We can do bone marrow aspiration. So that's this picture here. So we go into that bone marrow, withdraw it, and really are looking at those cells that are being made. This concludes this presentation. If you have any questions on it, please talk to your professor.